Boom. What is up, Wanderers? We are back, and we're back with a really cool one-take bag review. This is a bag that I am super excited to share with you, and I've had it in testing for a couple of weeks now, and I'm just thrilled to tell you what I think about it. So what are we reviewing? This, the 511 Tactical Rush 12 2.0. All right. This is an iconic bag. It's one of the most well-known tactical brands out there. I got it in this cool camo colorway. I really dig it. I like how it looks, and I can't wait to get into the bag with all of you. Okay, so you know what we do on this channel. We're gonna look at this bag inside, outside, check all the pockets, the nooks and crannies, and then we're gonna talk about two things that I really, really like about this bag. Two things, not so much, and then an overall recommendation for you. Should you buy the 511 Tactical Rush 12 2.0? We'll also talk a little bit about the differences between the 1.0 and the 2.0, and if you have the 1.0, should you upgrade all that stuff. So I guess first thing you need to know about this bag is that when 511 names the bag in the Rush series, it's not talking about the liters or the capacity of the bag like a lot of other uh, makers do. So for example, if you were to buy the VanQuest Adax 25L, that's the 25 liter. It's 25 liter bag compared to the 18 liter bag. 12 in the name of this is not the number of liters of capacity in the bag. 12 refers to the amount of time that this bag is designed to, you know, be sufficient for. So there's a 12, a 24, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so a three-day bag, a half-day bag, a one-day bag, etc. So this is designed to be a half-day bag, um, which would indicate it's not an overnight bag. I think that's the biggest distinction. So if you want the overnight capacity, changes of clothes, toss a dop kit in, some toiletries, etc., um, get the 24, this is the 12, it's an EDC bag. So, which is great, right? That's what we do on this channel. Um, so, Let's dive into the outside first. I think there's a lot to look at on this bag um, on the outside and the exterior to talk about. So first off, the Molly is everywhere. So here, 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 here. So attachment points galore, which is one of the really neat things about this bag. And if you are a uh, tactical bag fan, then you also got all kinds of little doodads and pouches and pockets that you can attach. So there's no drink holder on the exterior of this bag. What there is, is a ton of attachment points. You can easily attach a Molly drink holder. You can attach all kinds, I mean, really anything you want. You can see that I've mainly used it for attaching pin lights, some Sharpies, etc. Okay. Uh, there are two sections of hook, hook and loop right here and right up here. One molly panel, two molly panels covered by hook and loop. All right. So what else do you need to know? This is like 1000D nylon. Um, it is sturdy as heck. It's just about bomb proof. The materials feel fantastic. Great grab handle on top, which is really important because you can stuff this thing to the gills and it can get pretty heavy. Okay, on the back, what do you need to know? You've got a really comfortable uh, back panel here um, with a rigid plate, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. You've got a really interesting yoke and harness si si situation system is what I was trying to say, um, and a nice sternum strap as well. It's a comfortable bag to carry, um, and you have some straps on the side here that you can compress the bag with if you wanted to, um, or you can release those sternum strap or those uh, compression straps if you wanted to. You could even cut those off pretty easily if you wanted to. Okay, so that's the beauty of a bag like this. Customize the hell out of it, make it yours. It's designed to hold up to a lot of abuse, so go crazy, do whatever you want to with the bag. Um, and it's not overly expensive. Uh, you can spend you know, up to $350 on some of these top maker tactical bags or tactical look bags. Uh, a bag like this is much less than that. Check your current prices at Amazon and at 511 and shop smart. Think about Black Friday sales, seasonal sales, etc. And always double check the secondhand market as well. All right. So I think it's time. I think it's time for us to talk pockets. I, I should say you guys need to know that this 
yoke backpack system that they have on this bag is likely not for everybody. Um, and it's got a little bit of, uh, so this is the hydration pack we'll talk about in a second, or hydration pocket. Um, and it's gonna sit over the back of that so it doesn't truly attach to the back of the backpack. It's got a little bit of space there. So it rides a little bit differently than some backpacks I've had before. Um, not a deal breaker for me, it's still very comfortable and the weight distribution on the harness system is really good. All right, so front pocket first. These are not AquaGuard zippers, but they are protected by a flap of fabric. Uh, doesn't look like it's gonna be an issue in terms of water or moisture. Inside this front pocket, you have the admin panel. You have two pockets in this kind of drop section. I've uh, put in reading glasses, blue light blocking, um, just a headband over here. I've got my pocket knife, my Leatherman, a wallet, Another pair of glasses, I had sunglasses in there the other day, um, but then I moved those. And you've got a tiny little key carabiner and then you've got a zip pocket that goes all the way down here. So inside, inside this uh, front admin pocket, you have one pocket, two pockets, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the drop section is nine. So there's nine different components inside this section that you can use for storage and doodads and pieces all right second section is actually not this one there's a new this is one of the improvements for the rush 12 2.0 you have a hidden section right here okay so let me flip this around show it better it just pulls open it's hook and loop okay what is that for well that's for concealed carry and it reaches all the way down into the front it's also in my opinion and we'll talk about two things i love about this bag the coolest new feature i love that thing quick rip open there's a tab too that you can use but it's you can just grab the top part of the pocket rip it open reach in and some people would pull out a weapon there i pull out my dji osmo pocket too quick access to my camera gear boom okay pretty good pretty good what's up top here well, you've got a little drop pocket. I've put in my AirPods and some electronics doodads. It's a good size little drop pocket. Now we're going to unhook the compression straps, but we're not going in there just yet because we have on the top of the bag, another sunglasses pocket. So you've got this one right here, top pocket, and then you've got this one, top pocket. Let's see what kind of top pocket finds I've got going on here. Shout out to my Oak Island fans. Um, I just put some extra first aid stuff in there, but this is your felt line pocket. It's larger. This is another improvement from the um, Rush 12 1.0 to the 2.0. It's a larger sunglass pocket. It is felt lined. It does have kind of a rigid, what's the best way to say this? Kind of a rigid metal strap along the back side. So it's not insanely comfortable to reach into, but once you're in there, there's tons of space, okay? It is kind of protective feeling, but it's got a weird kind of, weird metal feeling going into it. Okay, so let's open up the main compartment, which clamshells all the way down, which is nice to see, right? Okay, I've got inside here, sweatshirt, along with a toboggan, Nintendo Switch. And then on the front side, you have two insanely useful mesh pockets. In one of them, I have put my cords and power bank. And in the bottom one, I put my gimbal. Now here's another change. You can see, by the way, this is the pocket that I was in earlier, the sunglass pocket. It drops down into this main compartment. This is the third major upgrade on this bag from the previous version, and I love it. What do you have in here? You have a laptop compartment big enough to hold a 15-inch MacBook Pro. I have in there a 15, or excuse me, a slightly smaller than 15-inch, a Microsoft Surface Laptop 4. So 
very, very well padded, very secure. These bags, these tactical, tactical bags, sometimes just have a vinyl slip-in pocket that's designed for hydration or a laptop. This is a dedicated laptop pocket, um, which is really great to see. Nice job, 511. But as we talked about, that's not it because on the back of this bag, you have a hydration bladder pocket. If you are out in the woods a lot, if you are out, you know, rucking or hiking or um, shooting things, you may be using this for your hydration bladder. I used it for my iPad. Okay, it's perfectly sized. That's an 11 inch iPad with a magic keyboard. Um, and you can leave this little tab out here. You guys may be familiar with uh, pieces like that. That you know, helps you to open things quicker. But one thing that's interesting that you should know about, there is a plastic rigid plate in the back of this section, which gives the backpack kind of, it helps it keep its form. Um, and I think, don't quote me on this because this is not my deal, um, but I think you can also get some body armor to slip into the back of this that's custom sized. Not from 5.11, but from some of their partner companies that fits in that back section too. So, wow. That's all of our pockets and all of our changes from 1.0 to 2.0. And it's time for us to talk about my overall impressions of this bag. Two things that I really like about this bag. Two things, eh, not so much. So, what do I really like about this bag? Well, I gotta say, I've never bought the Rush uh, 12 from 511 because it had a couple of limitations in my mind. The first limitation that it had in my mind was no dedicated laptop sleeve. So that's the first thing that I really like about this bag. The laptop sleeve edition is really good. And in fact, we're gonna go ahead and call out the three major editions as things that I love about this bag. The slip-in pocket on the front, probably the most useful pocket on the whole entire bag. It's really good the laptop sleeve, and then the second sunglass pocket, because this one up here is a great pocket too. Okay, so you've got two kind of top pockets that you can utilize. Put your sunglasses in one, put your AirPods and some doodickies and pens and stuff in the other. Uh, pretty great, or use one for first aid like I did. So, that's the first thing that I love about this bag. The changes that they made between 1.0 and 2.0 all hit the mark. Really good job. What's the second thing I love about this bag? Well, I love the insane customization options. So they give you every kind of customization option that you can think of. And it, like not just the morale patches, which I always love, but tons of Molly panels. You've got them on the side, you've got them on this side, you've got them on the back, you've got them on the front. The only thing they didn't give you uh, any uh, customization options on is actually inside the back of the bag. Like no Velcro hook and loop, no um, uh, panels on the inside of the bag at all for you to add anything on the inside. But everywhere else on the exterior, tons of customization options. You can really make this bag your own and make it look, you know, not just like any 511 bag, but really like your bag. So. Two things that I don't like as much. These may be very unpopular, so I'll go ahead and say that I'm not a tactical bag user, and a lot of you aren't either in terms of using these bags for, you know, trekking on guard duty, etc. If you are, you may think that I'm an idiot with what I'm about to say. We'll see. So, the first thing that I don't love about this bag is this rigid panel in the back, and it can be removed, but what can't be removed is this entire hydration section just sticks out from the back of the bag. I'd rather it be a second pocket on this side of the harness rather than a pocket that sticks out kind of a good three inches at the top and about an inch down at the bottom and not at all at the very bottom. But it feels, it, it just sticks into your back. I don't like the way that it feels on my back. I'd rather this secondary pocket, even if it was a hydration pocket, I'd rather it just be a dedicated laptop pocket on the back of the bag. But then we're really wandering into like laptop bag territory, I guess, which is not really what this is designed for. So don't like how this sticks out into your back from the back of the bag, um, isn't insanely comfortable. That's the first thing that I don't like about the bag. 
And the second thing I don't like about the bag, I told you earlier, is good, but it's not for me, okay? This harness system is incredibly well built out, and it's incredibly well thought out. But when I wear this backpack, and this is empty, by the way, I never could, over the course of the multiple weeks that I tried this bag, I never could quite get it to feel great, okay? It always felt like it was floating a little bit on my back. It always felt like it was not quite sitting right on my back. When I tightened it up, it didn't feel right. When I let it out, it didn't feel right. So it's really well made. I've got to say, it is a really, really insanely well made bag, but it didn't quite fit me right. So what I would actually recommend you do is if you're very interested in this bag, you've got an insanely cool opportunity. 511 has stores. You don't have to buy this bag online. You can just go to a 511 store. Try it on, see what you think. Because I'm not saying that these are bad straps. I'm saying for me, they don't fit me right, okay? So I think you should just go try that. Now, do I recommend this bag? You think, you think I'm about to say no because I've got some things I'm picking on, but actually the answer is yes. This is a really, really fun bag. There's a ton you can get into this bag. If you have a concealed carry situation, that is maybe the most realistic, reasonable, cool, and it's hook and loop in there, by the way, of course. You guys know that if you are concealed carry, you can put your Velcro holster down in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a really good bag, and, and it's really well made. I think you would really like this bag. I highly recommend it, but, it's a big but, you gotta go try it on first. If it fits you right, if it feels nice on your back, then it's a must buy but I think you just gotta be willing to understand like, is it for you when you try it on? I think you'll understand what I mean when you put it on and you kind of feel how this back section with the hydration bladder pushes against your back a little bit um, and just how this unique harness fits. Um, yeah, if this was a hiking bag and I was heading up into the mountains, heading going camping, maybe I bought the Rush 72 or something, then I'd say I would like all in, you know, function over form, give me something that's gonna distribute weight, et cetera. But this is a half day EDC bag and having like a hiking, mountaineering situation on the yoke just feels a little bit weird to carry it around the city. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, probably a ton of you own this bag. Let me know what you think about the harness I love the pockets, I love the customization, I love all the changes they made between 1.0 and 2.0, and I do highly recommend this bag, but I also highly recommend you try it first. All right, everybody, that's it for now. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you check out some of our other reviews. We've got a ton of reviews up on the channel. I hope you enjoy those as well. Subscribe, like the video, and let me know what you think. Thanks so much, everybody. Talk to you next time. Bye for now.